Hey, how's it going? I've got a new project for you today. We're going to build a sword rack. This is based on the one that I've built and you may have seen in other videos that I've made. So we'll build it just the same way. Uh, I'll show you from start to finish how I build it. And now I want to be up front and let you know that it's not based on any historical example that I'm aware of. This is really sturdy, but you know, this is for your private collection. It's going to look great you know, in your, in your living room or wherever you keep your swords. So let's get to work. Let me show you the plans and we'll get started. I should start by saying this is probably by far the easiest project that uh, I'm going to show you how to do. Um, really you're only using these three pieces of wood. You have at the top arms and they will connect the two columns and then at the bottom there that slanted piece of wood that is for the support feet. You'll have eight of those and then you'll have eight columns. And then before I forget you'll want two spacers, just scraps of wood. Uh, we'll put them on at the very end. So what kind of wood did I choose for most of the project? I've chosen select pine because it's not going to be filled with knots. It's going to be very nice. Um, they've planed it smooth. This is probably the grade you would use for some sort of furniture construction. So we're going to look at the uh, dimensions on uh, the arms, the columns, and support feet individually. But just so you can see how long each board is, uh, we start out with, it's right here. And then also the project's going to require 20 nuts, 20 bolts, and 20 washers. All right, step one, the feet. The very first thing we want to do uh, is cut out a pattern uh, for the feet. This is what the foot should look like. Uh, these are the dimensions. I just cut out this pattern on a piece of cardboard. I folded it over. Uh, don't let that bother you. Um, just imagine that it's not folded over. Once you have it cut out, you'll just lay that across the wood so the wood can be cut so that there's no waste there. You can cut this out with any type of saw that you have access to. A handsaw works just fine. Uh, there are more efficient and more accurate saws as well. Um, you know, table saw works great. Step two, the arms. The arms are exactly like the feet. We've got the dimensions here. This is how you'll want the arms to look before you cut them out. Now the ends of the arms, they can be cut at any angle that you wish. Step three, the columns. Could have gone with a more expensive piece of wood, but instead I just went with the uh, two inch by two inch by eight foot long furring strip. As the tag shows, these are $1.89. Your experience may vary a little bit depending on where you are, what kind of wood is available. Step four, drilling and assembly. So we cut out all the feet and we're gonna divide them into two different groups. Half of them will be group A, half of them group B. The only difference is where the holes are drilled. So the spacing, we want to make sure that group A has different spacing than group B, and we want to make sure they're sort of evenly spaced so that the uh, holes don't interfere with each other. Now you'll notice that we're measuring from the middle of the board where you have that angle. It's difficult to get an accurate measurement unless you have a 90 degree angle. So we're going to create that. You can do that with a T-square or protractor or simply measure from the bottom. And then once we have that 90 degree angle, you'll be able to accurately gauge the three inch, the eight inch, the one and a half inch, and the five and a half inch marks. So just so no one gets confused, I wanna make a quick point about the dimensions of the columns. Uh, they're sold as two inches by two inches, and they are indeed a square, but it's closer to about one and a half inches for each side. And uh, so this is, maybe a little shocking if you go into a hardware store in the US a lot of times uh, whatever is on the sticker is not what the actual dimensions will measure because of this we're going to be putting the uh, holes that we drill in the feet uh, three quarters of an inch from the edge usually I use a hand drill for the pilot hole and then I use the drill press because I can line up more than one piece of wood on top of each other And then a lot of times I just slide the bolt all the way through here um, just to make sure that everything lines up. If you need to do a little bit of sanding, that's fine. Um, we want these edges all to be straight. And so I, I sort of slide the bolt there to make sure that they all are. The next thing we need to do is drill holes into the column. So here are the distances from the bottom, eight inch, three inch, one and a half inch, and five and a half inch marks. You'll notice that one of them is side A 
and the other one is side B. Once we've drilled the holes in the columns, we're ready to assemble the feet and the columns together. When you get all the pieces together, it should be really intuitive uh, to figure out how they go, but if you have any trouble, just remember that we did divide the feet into two groups, group A and group B. And group A are going to correspond to the columns that have side A measurements, and group B likewise. If everything doesn't slide together really smoothly the very first time, don't worry about it, don't be discouraged. Uh, you can hammer this together or widen the holes just a little bit if you need to. Once all the pieces are together for the columns and the feet, you're ready to tighten everything up. So use a wrench, get it really tight. If you add bevels, I would do that last just so that you don't have to uh, reorient anything, cut any new wood if you've uh, cut the bevel the wrong way um, before assembling it. So my recommendation is definitely take care of this last and then you have these scraps of wood they fit between the columns like this and they will be tightened down then the last step of the assembly will be to add the arms in terms of exactly where you put the arms it's totally up to you uh, if you have longer swords you probably want to make it as high as possible so at this point the only thing left to do is finish it what i'm going to do is use a varnish and cover it with a few coats uh, you may choose linseed oil if you want, and that would be like a historically accurate choice, but it's not going to provide much protection. You may have a little bit of surface hardening with linseed oil, but not much. It'll also cause the wood to be discolored over time. It'll become more yellow, but if you really want to protect it for a longer period of time, I would use like a Helmsman Spar Urethane. That's sort of my go-to. It's a Minwax helmsman spar urethane. So at this point we've come to the very end. I think the results are pretty satisfying. I really can't end this video without thanking Shad from Shadiversity. A few days ago he mentioned Everything Medieval on his own YouTube channel. As he talked about in his video, this community of sword enthusiasts is just really amazing. Him going out of his way to talk about a really tiny channel like mine uh, it's just really cool and totally unusual. So thank you so much, Shad. So the other thing I should probably address is sort of just where I've been. Over the last eight or nine weeks, I've been away from YouTube, and I'm working on another project. I'm not leaving YouTube in any sense, but uh, the other project is a feature film. It's a sci-fi indie uh, movie that I've written and that I'm planning on producing. If this was like a medieval, you know, knights and swords and castle uh, type of movie, uh, if it was more like that, I'm sure it, it would appeal to a lot of people. But I'm still going to have a little bit of info here. I will provide some updates here as we get further along. And uh, thanks for watching today, guys. I will uh, talk to everybody a little later.